Were you there for his goodbye resignation I speech? I did hear his goodbye resignation speech. Were you moved? I was moved, especially when he thanked his wife and uh, the people <sighs> around him that were targeted by the media. I was moved by that, yeah. Yeah. Did you think, God, the media, they're to blame? I didn't think they were to blame. I didn't think the media... Because if it hadn't been for the media, he'd still be in his job. <laughs> Legitimate things that the media asked and totally illegitimate things that the media asked. Which one? And Which ones were they? The innuendo about his personal life. He said he'd blurred his personal and professional life, so presumably we were entitled to ask about the personal life. There was a legitimate area of inquiry, that's perfectly fine. Most of the coverage was not about that legitimate area of inquiry. And so he had his mate in the room, who wasn't um, uh, security vetted, who was listening to briefings that he should have had nothing to do with. A and mate who was paid by shadowy right. transatlantic interests, including the Israeli government and the Iranians and the others, who were paying through a fake company called, what was it called? Satnav or Pargav or something. Oh. Uh, <laughs> which managed to <laughs> fork out all this money. I mean, it was a really shocking dereliction of duty. It mm. was a Breach the ministerial code and you resign for it. <laughs> I don't see. I don't see. Breach the resigned. code sounds like he's ripped his trousers. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it just seems an extraordinary thing to take your mate along when you're dealing with uh, nuclear warheads and that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's all right. He's all right. Come in. Go on, yeah. mate. Do <laughs> Sit down. Order some drinks up. We'll have this done in ten minutes. Go on. <laughs> there was some cheap innuendo, though, wasn't there? Quite no. a lot of it. No. There was no cheap innuendo at all. If Adam Werity had been a young girl, 70s younger than a, than a minister, who'd um, he'd met at a university, put in his own house, given a job, stuck with him and took, taken on holiday to a four-star hotel, then you'd have seen some proper innuendo. <laughs> so you're saying Fox resigned because he did something wrong. Or did he? Here is his colleague Peter Bone, MP, on Newsnight. Why not just accept the, the obvious that because... Did he resign because he did something wrong? Absolutely not. He I resigned because he did something right. He, he resigned, yes, because he did something right. <laughs> uh, so who's taken over at Defence? Uh, Hammond. Hammond. Yeah, no, me, me neither. <laughs> Most of the papers described him as a safe pair of hands, although the Independent went with reassuringly boring. <laughs> I think if Fox, his name hadn't been Fox, there wouldn't be any sympathy. I mean, everyone could say, oh, Fox was hounded. And <laughs> the Fox was hunted. What if he'd been called Dr Liam Piranha? <laughs> Dr Liam Vampire her. Squid. <laughs> I think we'd have had a more accurate representation. Well, David Cameron said that he felt ministerial rules needed to be tightened. I think that's what he meant was... Followed. <laughs> <laughs> so political lobbying is in the spotlight again after the Fox affair.